Well, 50, 60 years of chemical gardening, now the organic content of the Rio Grande Valley soils is less than one half of one percent in most areas. And consequently, the crops are not nearly the quality they used to be. The minerals in the crops aren't nearly the quality they used to be. I read a USDA report that said spinach harvested today has about 5% as much iron as it did in the 20s and 30s. It's all the way we've screwed up the land with chemical fertilizers. And the things that, that chemical fertilizers do, besides killing microbial life in the soil, the reason that they burn the organic material out of the soil is that the microbes in the soil, the bacteria and the fungi, especially the bacteria, have to have an energy source to survive. And if you don't have microbes in the soil, you can't grow anything because microbes are what convert all the different minerals and fertilizers, chemical or otherwise, into a form that plants can absorb and use. Somebody couldn't find a parking place. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, the source of energy for the soil microbes that do so much for us is organic material in the soil. Virtually all the energy in the world, other than nuclear, is tied up in the form of carbon bonds in energy. I mean, the coal, the oil, the gas that you burned in your cars to get here this morning, all that material was once plants. Those plants got their energy from the sun and took the sun's energy, converted it into what we call chemical energy in the form of something called carbon bonds, and things um, in the soil, the microbes and various other things, break these carbon bonds to get the energy that they need to live. When you put a chemical fertilizer on the ground, there's no energy in there whatsoever. There's no organic material in there. So the microbes in the soil break down the organic material that's already there. And over the years, the level of the organic material just goes down, 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 down. When you put an organic fertilizer on the soil, the organic material not only, or the uh, fertilizer not only takes all of the organic material that it needs in with it, it builds more organic material. Every time that you fertilize with an organic fertilizer, you increase the organic content of the soil. Every time you feed with chemical fertilizer, you decrease the organic content of the soil. So, when you first start out, you probably are going to need to add more organic material to your, so to your soil. What are the two best ways to do this? Well, instant organic material is compost, and that bag right there, I think, is the best compost you will ever find in a bag. It's by Ladybug. They call it Revitalizer Compost. If you're going to buy compost in bulk, I think New Earth has by far the best compost in the area. Fertile Garden Supply would be second, but they don't ever want me to mention this, but they buy a lot of their compost from New Earth and blend it with their own. I'm not real hot on Gardenville compost since Malcolm doesn't run the show out there anymore. It's just not the quality it used to be. But if you're looking for it by the truck work, truckload, I'll send you to New Earth or to Fertile Garden Supply or to one of the many people that carry New Earth products. I buy it from Stone and Soil Depot. They happen to be out near where I am, but there are about 15, 20 different people to carry the New Earth products. But anyway, if you're starting out with lousy soil, uh, bringing in some compost is going to be one of the best things you can do. Making your own compost, I still recommend very, very highly. The problem is, I don't know anybody can make enough compost to do the amount of gardening that most of us enjoy. And by the way, if you're thinking about compost, do it in a pile, whether it's in a container or out of a container. You see these little gimmicky things, they call barrel composters, and they say, oh, you know, you make compost every two weeks, and you're supposed to stand out there and turn it a hundred times a day or whatever. It's good exercise. You won't have to join a health club if you do this. But you don't get the good quality compost that you do in a compost pile. Just 90 second digression here. Two things break down organic material. Two things make compost, bacteria and fungi. Fungi being plural of fungus, of course. Some people have never learned that, including Malcolm Beck, who talks about funguses. No, fungi. Uh, bacteria are very tiny. And you can put those in a composter, and you can spin them around and, you know, turn them over with a pitchfork ten times a day, whatever you want, and you don't really harm them. But one of the most important things we have in the compost pile, one of the most important things you have in your soil, are beneficial fungi. And the fungi are the things that decompose the woodier material, the chunks of tree bark or limbs or whatever else, really heavy things. It's, it's one form or another of fungus that breaks those down. 
Now everybody's gone out and maybe you're turning over a pile of leaves, maybe you have a compost pile, maybe you're just digging in the ground and you see all this white thready material running all through the place. That's good stuff. That's fungus. That's beneficial fungus and it's doing a lot of good things in the pile of leaves or in the compost bin or whatever else. But instead of being tiny, almost microscopic in size, you know, these things are big, long pieces of material. But what happens every time you turn that barrel, every time you go out with that compost fork and you turn your compost pile over, you're breaking that stuff up and you're killing it and you're limiting its ability to do what it needs to. So in a compost pile, I don't recommend turning it more two, three times a year. You get better compost that way. And simply because of the fungal action, I want to tell you just what you're doing or tell you why you do it because you'll remember it a whole lot longer. you remember it till tomorrow instead of just till the seminar is over. But anyway, that's why, that's why I think that static pile composting gives you by far the best compost. How much compost do you need? There's no such thing as too much compost. You should be limited by your bank account, by the ability of, you know, your time to create that garden. Probably, I think probably the prettiest squash plant I have ever seen. Several years ago I had the pleasure of going to Switzerland in one place wandering through the countryside there was an old barn, they put their barns way up high and there was a pile of manure and compost that had just been shoveled out of the end of the barn for who knows how many years and growing out of the top of this compost pile was truly the prettiest squash, two or three plants that I've ever seen in my life. Good compost, you could grow in pure compost if you wanted to, but you don't really need to. I'll tell you a little bit specifically about how I get ready to plant in just a minute. And, uh, but anyway, compost is one thing that you can add to the soil to improve it. The other thing you do is add things that stimulate bacterial life. What stimulates bacterial life? Sugars, carbohydrates. This is what really, you know, makes those bacteria reproduce and do all the things that they do. Probably the most effective form, at least as far as cost and as far as what works well, the most effective form of sugar is molasses because it's cheap. Uh, you can eat it as you go if you like. Actually, I use, uh, I'd have feeders out for my cattle and I have a guy that comes around with a big truck and refills them every couple of months. And that stuff's really cheap. I mean, I think I'm paying him two, three dollars a gallon, which is a lot less than we can buy it for here at the nursery. But generally speaking, uh, molasses is going to be one of your best source of sugars. But don't throw away anything sugary. If you've got old Coca-Cola or whatever else in there, that, uh, you know, sugared, that stuff's fine to dump on your compost pile. Uh, again, Malcolm Beck, one of my several good mentors and the man who started and ran Gardenville for many, many years and who made a ton of compost, Malcolm is, was just, is, was when he was with Gardenville, still is, one of the great innovators of reusing things. He found out that the Coca-Cola bottling plant here was paying saws thousands of dollars a year for the right to pour their old out-of-date Coca-Cola down the, down the sewer system. Well, Malcolm said, I tell you what, if you'll bring it out here, I'll let you spray it on my compost piles at no charge. In fact, I'll even pay you $5 a load for it. So, of course, they jumped on that and thought that was a great thing. His compost piles started working faster and faster and getting hotter and hotter. How hot did his compost piles get? I've seen it. One Thanksgiving, he took a turkey wrapped it up, you know, in the baking paper, wrapped it up in two or three layers of foil, buried it in his compost pile for 36 hours, and he claims it was the most succulent monster. <laughs> Since that time, I know he's cooked at least one pig and uh, a few other things, and that's how hot it gets. So you get a compost pile so hot it catches on fire. That's not going to happen in your backyard, but anyway. That's what anything sugary like that is really going to increase the breakdown in your compost pile because it stimulates that bacterial activity. And anything that is sugary, well, not anything, but, but just about anything that you have that's sugary would be a good thing to dump into the compost pile. There's one antimicrobial sugary substance. Anybody know what it is? Honey. Don't put honey in there. Honey doesn't really do much. Have you ever noticed honey doesn't ever grow any mold on it? <laughs> Honey's it. antimicrobial. They're finding wonderful things to do with honey. They're using it in serious burn cases. Anyway, that's off the subject. But anything sugary in there, whether it's old chocolate cake or old Coke syrup or, or molasses, that's the sort of thing that's really going to make your, your compost pile work faster. And in your soil, you can put on liquid molasses, 
you know, dilute it down to a couple ounces per gallon. You can put on dry molasses. Dry molasses is molasses that has been taken and soaked into a solid material, a substrate, so to speak. Dry molasses is not crystallized molasses. It's not molasses with the moisture taken out of it. The best dry molasses out there is... Uh,